A lot of these historically black colleges were founded at a time where African Americans were not allowed to go into regular universities. So it was founded in 1881, and it's located in Atlanta, Georgia. And Atlanta, Georgia has been historically really um, a high cultural spot for African Americans. Um, I'm a teacher, so I'm going to ask a question. Do you know anybody famous? Maybe who got the Nobel Prize was from Atlanta? Anybody? Marcy Luther King, thank you. Yes. Uh, and so it's a place um, that it was um, that had an important prominent role during the civil rights movement. Uh, and so uh, Spelman College is one of two historically black colleges for women uh, in the entire American higher education landscape. So there's only two similar institutions, uh, or another similar institution that's located in uh, Greensboro, North Carolina. And so today, it is an institution that's really recognized um, as an institution that empowers and equips black women, uh, and the motto is a choice to change the world. So we're really known for two things. One is for our strong STEM programs that um, launch students into uh, graduate studies and professional studies in STEM fields. And then the other thing is, of course, um, the legacy around social justice. And so here are some of the pride points. Uh, it's considered as the number one historically black college for women, or historically black college, simply. Um, we have a graduation rate that's about, I think these, these uh, numbers are about a couple of years old. So I think now our uh, graduation, six-year graduation rate is about 78%. Um, who thinks it's high and who thinks it's low? Who thinks it's high? Raise your hands. Who thinks it's low? No response. <laughs> okay, it's going to be a quiz for next time. Uh, so 76% um, would be actually quite high, uh, considering that the same student population uh, in other places would have a graduation rate that would be around 40% or less than 40%. So we're really beating the odds uh, at this institution. So we have a lot of students who go on to get uh, Fulbright, um, get Millennium Scholars, and so on. Um, and what I really uh, like to highlight is the fact that we're considered as the number one institution that sends students to uh, graduate programs instead, or PhD programs instead. Um, another thing that's happening is that um, Atlanta is very attractive to African Americans, and a lot of people are leaving Silicon Valley and coming to Atlanta, so they become sort of a tech hub mostly for African Americans. And Spelman graduates are also contributing to that. It's considered as uh, the top 10 schools that produces black women founders of technology companies. And of course, black women are considered real unicorns, meaning you know, rare animals uh, in this field. And so the reason why I'm talking about all these accolades is that it's a really an institution that beats the odds and why is it that Spelman is so successful uh, in educating uh, minorities, and especially women? Uh, what are the elements that enable such success? And a lot of other institutions are looking at what we're doing and are trying to understand what these elements are so that they can be replicated in other settings, be they in the United States or uh, elsewhere. And so the way we view it and the way I view it is that we always talk about the Spelman ecosystem. Uh, and so uh, there is uh, a lot of interrelationships in, among the players. Uh, there's a very interconnected web uh, that uh, makes it very sustainable. Uh, and so sociologists use they call, uh, what they call the ecological model. Uh, again, where you have the student at the center, for example, and then their peers. There's interconnection between students and their peers. Their near peers, who might be two years ahead of them, who just graduated. And then there's all the faculty, and then there's the alumni. 
Um, there is also all the, the fundraising. There's a huge alignment between what happens at every step. Uh, and so I'm going to talk a little bit about you know, some of these elements. Uh, and so the school itself was founded by Sophia Packard and Harriet Giles, uh, two women who came from the north and founded the school. And one of the things that happened is that there was another school already right next door that was for boys called Morehouse College. And that's where Martin Luther King graduated from. And so when they decided to found a school for women, they were told, well, why don't you educate them along with the, with the men? And they said, no, we really want uh, an institution that's dedicated to the women. We don't want the women to be secondhand citizens uh, in the midst of the men. Uh, we really want to give them their attention. And so they, they founded the school. They were really strong believers and very motivated in what they were doing. And so a few years later, and um, just a couple of years later, somebody was really convinced by their idea. And that person was actually Rockefeller. Rockefeller, who at that time, and even I think to this day, is considered as one of the wealthiest person on the planet. And uh, he gave them a lot of money, which helped them really expand uh, the school at the location uh, that it occupies to this day. And so we've only had 10 presidents since these two founders, with Sophia Packard being the first one, Harry Giles being the second one, and now we're on to our 10th president. So there's really uh, consistency in the leadership. Uh, there's not a lot of shifts, which is not like uh, sometimes other HBCUs. Um, and we now have uh, President <coughs> Mary Schmidt Cargill, who's really uh, another visionary. Uh, she's um, preparing her legacy, which would be a center for innovation and the arts. She's really interested in marrying uh, the tech and the arts. And of course, another big initiative on our campus is data science. Uh, I'm fully involved in it. Uh, it's an initiative that's um, between Spelman College, Morehouse College, and then another adjacent college uh, or university that is Clark Atlanta University and then the Morehouse School of Medicine. So four institutions are joining forces to start up the Data Science Institute that's going to serve probably the largest contiguous consortium of African Americans in higher education. Another focus of our president is really increasing that 76% retention rate. And the main reason why our retention rate uh, would not go a little higher is because our education is not always affordable to our student body. Uh, and so it's a private institution. They have to pay more than uh, if they went to uh, a public uh, institution. Uh, and so the peers. So uh, going at Spelman College means you're going to have a critical mass of peers that are going to be female uh, and black. Uh, but the interesting thing is that when I first arrived at Spelman and I first attended the early gatherings, I noticed that you know people were saying there's a lot of diversity, and I didn't understand what they were talking about <laughs> because pretty much everyone you see, you saw was black and female. And it turns out that, um, yes, there's a lot of diversity in the way people think about it, and obviously, you know, other dimensions such as uh, religion and origin, state origin, geographic location, and so on. Um, but most importantly, what this, what's most important here for me is that uh, students can find like-minded students, right? Like-minded doesn't just mean being black and female, but there's a lot more diversity in shared diversity also um, that students can have. Um, there is a lot of um, interconnectedness among these students. And they have a strong sense of belonging. Anything from study sessions to interest groups that are so numerous on campus clubs, as well as living and learning communities are present on campus. I personally am involved in one of those, uh, and I co-direct a program that's called the Link Scholars. These are living and learning communities uh, of STEM scholars. Um, and there's also students who take on a lot of uh, leadership roles, such as in the Student Government Association. So a, a few examples of high impact cohorts. For example, we have the Social Justice Fellows, Student, um, um, student Government Association, 
the honors programs, President's Book Circle, for example, a few students each year get to read a book and travel with the president to the last time, for example. They uh, travel with the president to go see um, the Broadway production. Um, so, um, so, um, um, so then, um, what I should add is that there are powerful alumni that really dedicate their time and energy to give back to their institution. Um, they are regularly invited to departmental fora or campus-wide events. Um, typically, uh, in the biology department, we invite the recent graduates who might be in the area. Um, the, the bigger, bigger name alumni uh, make it to more larger campus-wide events. So recently, uh, we had Rosalind Brewer, uh, Stacey Abrams, Evelyn Hammonds. In case you don't know them, I have a quick bio for them. Uh, so uh, Rosalind Brewer, she is the Starbucks Group President and Chief Operating Officer. She's also the Chair of the Spelman's Board of Trustees. She's the previous CEO of Sam's Club, and she's on the board of Amazon, and she just uh, was in the news uh, as she was in the 1400 most powerful women list. Uh, another one, Stacey Abrams, uh, she ran for governor uh, in Georgia, and just a couple of days ago, she was on the Washington Post, uh, she's really organized, uh, uh, she has an organization that uh, stands for fair elections in Georgia because um, the current governor has pur just purged 300,000 voters from its role. Uh, so she might become one of the vice presidents, so we have to be on um, the lookout for her uh, over the next few years. Uh, another more STEM-related faculty who was a newly elected member of the National Academy of Science. So I've had her uh, at a, um, a forum, a campus-wide forum, a couple of years ago. Uh, and so uh, uh, many other role models also come to campus. Uh, so just quickly, I'll mention Michelle Obama, Nancy Pelosi, Angela Davis, Kamala Harris. Um, Michelle Obama was a speaker at one of our graduations and so on. So, um, Spelman is really good at being able to bring in some of these uh, female role models. Um, so, but <clears throat> what I really focus on personally as a faculty member is what happens um, in the classroom, in curriculum development, and in research. Uh, and so faculty in general are highly committed to, to the students, there's a lot of interaction. Spelman being a very small institution, um, the student to faculty ratio is low, so uh, we really kind of, uh, we role model and we mentor our students very closely. We have also very high expectations for them. Um, and so we are really expected uh, to be research active as well as uh, develop innovative curricula and programs as well as engage in service activities. Um, a lot of faculty are well funded, uh, both for their research and programs. Uh, another aspect is the strategic partnerships that we might have. For example, my department has strategic partnerships with MIT and the Broad Institute of MIT and Harvard. Uh, and so, just to wrap it up, it's my last slide, so let's sit down. <laughs> um, so, what are the lessons learned? So, how do you beat the odds? Um, and I would just say that the Spelman model uh, really involves that clear vision uh, that informs the strategies and the activities uh, all across the board. Uh, and the sustainability probably comes from the fact that there's a lot of connectivity and a lot of players and a lot of redundancy in uh, the way we create that environment for our students. Uh, and so now currently there's really a paradigm shift in the US higher education, where it used to be that a student would come at an institution and the student would be a problem. Now it's shifting and uh, institutions are expected to accommodate the student. Uh, or, you know, uh, how do you change the institution so that everybody can go through that institution, everybody who may not be your higher um, student. Uh, 
Um, other um, successful programs that uh, borrow some of these elements are um, the well-established Meyerhoff program at UMBC, University of Maryland, Baltimore County. Uh, so with that, um, I think that was my last slide. And we're going to... Thank you, Dr. Mutubat, uh, for 